Um, so this one, this session is just a short session to um, talk about getting the news out. I think our project does a lot of really good work. We have collaborators who are putting a lot of effort into things. Um, and I, you know, this is like, how do we share the news of what people are doing, celebrate that news? Because I think we want to make sure that not just within our, our community we know that these things are happening, but get it out to the broadest community that we can. Um, that's not going to work for me. So, just going to talk a little bit about the motivation, what's already in place, what's next, and how people can help. But I think we could also use this as, as a sort of a springboard to talk about what we should be doing. Are there other ways that we should be sharing that news as well? So really the beginning is like we got lots of great work going on in the community. How does the larger ecosystem find out about this? Um, you know, you see some discussions in the community like, hey, I didn't even know you were doing this, right? And it's like, that's just a sign to me that we need to get more of that community news out there to the people who are interested in. I think it, it helps with showing that like Node is a vibrant ecosystem. There's so much that goes on, but that doesn't necessarily come through in terms of like, hey, there's lots going on, people are contributing. Um, it also might help to keep Node.js top of mind. You know, we talked earlier about do we need more marketing and it's kind of like the more news that's going out, the more people are like, hey, yeah, things are happening and it's new, it's stuff like that. I think it's really important to recognize the contributions of our collaborators. You know, people put a lot of effort in and it would be good to make sure that they get the, the, the positive feedback I think that you would get by sharing some of that news, hopefully. Um, I think it would also help us to get usage and feedback. So when we have new features, when we have experimental things we want people to try out, if they don't know that they exist, how are we going to get feedback? And then I think it's also maybe a way we can get in new collaborators because people sometimes get involved because they see something that they're interested in. They say, oh, I see somebody's working on XYZ feature and, you know, it's, it's experimental. Like maybe that's something I can jump in and, and help with. So, What's in place? Uh, you can do a little bit more reading in terms of the background, but we want to give a sort of a lightweight way to get news out. Developers are not marketing people. They don't want to write a blog post. Or, sorry, they don't want to write a press release. Sometimes they'll write a blog post, but the idea was to try and make it really, really easy to get news out. Um, and so what we have in the, in the issue that's documented there is there's uh, issues for some, for each, each like team or working group can create some issues. We created a, an issue for Node Core, where all you really need to do is post your little bit of news to that issue, and then the next 10 team will try and get that news out to the broader ecosystem. We um, reached out to some periodicals like Jess Weekly, Node Weekly, um, to try and get them interested. I think we still have a fair amount of work to do on that front. Their, their feedback was still like, well, we'd like the package thing that we can just point to. Um, so we might still need to like brainstorm a bit on, well, what is the, the right way to get that out is like, um, so, but the, the fundamental issue was, idea was like, hey, just post to this issue and it'll fit into this stream of like news that goes out. And just like we do for the rest of the things, it's kind of like we trust our collaborators to post to these issues. Um, you know, it shouldn't be like, hey, my company's doing this great thing. It should be like, hey, as a project, we've come together and we built this new feature and that kind of stuff, but we trust people to post the right kind of information. Um, and so we've got sort of the base framework in, and, and the key thing now is like, how do we get more people posting news and sort of getting that into your regular workflow of, hey, I did something interesting. Let's post, a, you know, a couple lines, paragraphs, um, so that we have more and more news. I hope that then makes people more and more interested in reading the feeds that that comes out on. Um, and maybe also have like a feedback loop because I can see if you post a couple lines and like say one of these weekly, the weekly newsletters is interested in some more information, maybe we can have a channel where they could ask a few more questions and sort of fill out the rest of the story that way. Um, one thing and great thanks to, to, to Ulysses who put this together is, you know, one of the, the early feedback we got was while a lot of news channels kind of consume their news through RSS feeds, and so he actually put, a, put together an RS feed that pulls all the things from those issues. So, you know, what we'd started with was, hey, there's a bunch of issues you can post there, and we've got a list of them. People can go in and look at those issues and see the news. But thanks to what Ulysses has done, is it's a lot easier. There's an RSS feed which 
takes all the issue, takes all the things posted to those issues, feeds them into this single RSS feed. It also now posts them to this channel in Slack. So if you want to, you know, see what's going on, it's as simple as subscribing to Slack. For outside people, we can point them to the RSS feed. Maybe we can brainstorm other ideas, like we could take this data and we could turn it into like, uh, I mean, in the past, I don't know if the APIs are, are still there. In the past, we could have like automatically tweeted each of these things out, right? Um, we could create a mailing list that people could register to and get the news. So the, sort of the next steps are like, how do we get people to know it's there? That's part of the reason I, I wanted to do this short thing is like to make sure all the collaborators here know that this is there. There, there's uh, issue in that main issue. It lists the different um, sub issues. So, like you know, there's one for the UV WASI team. There's one for the diagnostics team. So there may already be one for the teams you're working with. If not, feel free to to create one and add it, um, and encourage people to post your interesting news. It really, I think, will take a while for us to get in the habit of like, hey, we just did. Uh, this, things like releases are automatically pulled up, so when we get a release in Node or any of the, the subcomponents, we aut automatically get those. So it's getting us, everybody, into the, the, the habit of posting the news and then continuing to think about, like, how do we get that news so that it gets to that broad broadest audience. Um, so that's sort of the good lead into the what's next. So we got, you know, reach out to more periodicals. Uh, we did reach out to some, but like if you know of any good newsletters or good places where it would be good to say, hey, there's a, there's a nice RSS feed. If you want to pick up news com Node Community News, just go there. Um, as well as like, hey, generate some more news. Um, so how can you help? Post news that's interesting. Uh, find and reach out to new periodicals. And then, you know, let's chat about other ways to get the news out. So I didn't have a huge amount of time. Um, that's what I really wanted to cover, but maybe if we have a few minutes, anybody have any other ideas that come top of mind, like, hey, this is another great way we could get the news out or, you know, beyond the, the RSS feed? I'm like yeah, go for it. I was literally tracking it as an issue. Okay. Right. Have like a burst of activity. Right. So I was thinking maybe this is what I was opening the issue for, uh, so we can continue discussion there. But if we could just like look each week and put together, have it like automatically publish a single synopsis to the to the news feed. Right. That just had like links to that week's or even months. I don't know if you need to do maybe months is too long, but like a, a, like the t top five feeds of the uh, threads of the week. So that would just be based on number of comments or something like that? Maybe, or maybe yeah. we have somebody who, maybe we could all agree that giving thumbs up is something we want to start doing and we do by most thumbs up or something. I don't know, just something. Okay, that, yeah, no, that's, yeah. Because there's so many conversations and again, if you, if you go follow them, then you might get it in your GitHub notifications, but that can be it's very hard to find. It's find, yeah. hard to find, yeah. And th those would be interesting, too, because I have seen some of those show up in the periodicals that are talking about JavaScript. It's like, and the Node.js project is talking about blah, blah, blah this week, right? And so I think those might be ones that they'd be interested in, and having them show up there might then get them to see the other news in the feed as well. So, yeah, no, it's a good one. Too. Thanks. Any other top of mind things or...? Just quickly, should we also try to find a way to publish that kind of feed in a new website to have for people that just come into the Node.js website, oh, this is the last five topics being discussed or something like that? Yeah, it's a good, I, that's a good idea as opposed to just having like the link to the RSS yeah. if there was a page or something like that that showed that news. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea too. So. It, it already pulls, it already uh, pulls data from the node releases and those get published as news into the feed. Yeah, I, I mean, um, let's say that Diagnostic landed something on the Diagnostic channel and they posted on the issue and we have that new, new last layer. Right. Uh, I think that would be great to also link it on the changelog when releasing the Node.js 20.8 that includes that, that version, that specific feature. Okay. Because I, people read a lot of changelog, but currently 
if they, don't, they are not very technical, they won't understand it. Okay, so you're thinking we could get to the point where maybe doing a release, we could look at the last summary maybe. of the, the feed and if say, the okay, is there anything interesting we should pull in? Well, I don't want to include any more work to releasers, <laughs> honestly. But if we have a way to, to have that automation by labels, let's say that uh, when someone includes it to the newsletter, they have a label, okay, feature, uh, upcoming feature or something, we can automatically get it by a bot. But that's just an idea. Huh? Yeah, kind of. So related question, just before I close out, because this was just a very short session, was how would people like to consume this? So it's now available, it was available through GitHub to start, now it's available through RSS, it's available through our Slack channel. Are there any other, like what would be somebody's next most favorite way, well, or more favorite way of getting the news than, than one of these? Is it posted in the social media, like Twitter, uh, LinkedIn? We, we don't have it in Twitter. That was one we thought of, but like, I don't know if the Twitter APIs are still uh, available to do that. Okay. Yeah, it would need uh, manual action. But it could be something, yeah, like a, a once a week, here's what's since the last week might be possible. It can be once a, a month. Or yeah. Any other sort of like, the, that was a good one, social media, any other ones, ways that people would think would be good to get the news out? Podcasts? Podcasts? Yeah, weekly podcasts. I think listening is also help because a lot of us, we have time to listen for it, but and reading is like, we don't have enough time because we use all eyes for working. So right. We also read. Okay, so that would take a volunteer, but I could easily see a volunteer saying, hey, I'm going to do a podcast where I go through the weekly news that was on the feed, for example, right? Sort of like, hey, let's go through and take a look, at and then you could even, yeah, had, you know, it would take somebody who kind of likes to do that, but they could easily, like, highlight the things they found interesting. And There's people in the ecosystem who already do this. It's okay. possible we could reach out to some of them and say, hey, would you like to partner... Right. With some Node.js collaborators to get that done. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, maybe that's another good issue. You could, you want to open an issue that suggests doing that? And because then it'd be like, if people can suggest like who it would be that we should reach out to and so forth, that would be, because yeah, the, the whole idea is to. I would open it in the next Okay, you open this. Yeah. The, whole, the whole idea is like if we can, plug into some of the existing, like the idea was like, let's not write our own newsletter, let's plug into the existing newsletters that have, a, have an audience and get them the info that we hope, you know, and, and that's another similar, if there's a podcast, somebody who does that regularly and we can get them to cover the node, uh, you know, uh, project more regularly, that'd be great, so. And um, so if you're interested, you can always get involved in the Next 10 group who's sort of like working on this. There was a, an, an issue quite a while back saying, hey, we should try and get more news out, and this is where we've gotten to, but still working to, to improve and uh, move it forward. So the next session was on building long-term contributors. This is sort of only one element of the project health, but I think it's kind of an important one. In the past, we've had, you know, efforts to try and do like code and learns and things like that, and that's kind of, you know, trying to get people interested. Um, but I think, you know, over time, I've, I've come to the point where I think, it, it, to me, it's, it's one of the really important things is to figure out what does it take to get people involved long term versus just, you know, coming in and doing a, a commit or two, um, because that you know, it takes a while to build up context, um, get to know the different people in the project, and so like, how do we support and build up those long-term contributors? I do, I do have an easy retro, and maybe we can come back to this, but since we have these nice round tables, I'm actually thinking it would be good to have uh, sort of a local brainstorm within the, teach the, the table so we can have people talk to each other, and if people are up for it, what I'm thinking is, 
let's start, we have about 45 minutes, but let's start with like a brainstorm table by table to say like, what's the top two or three things you think are important to encouraging and supporting long-term contributors? And I'll actually get somebody from each of the tables to come up here and t talk about what the table talked about. Um, and then we can maybe go back to the, the easy retro and fill things in and go from there. But I think that would be a nice sort of more interactive type thing. So I'm going to, I don't know if, I, I've just sort of thought of this a few minutes ago. So I don't know if I, um, I don't have any paper or anything to give you. But if, if each table can kind of agree on somebody who's going to put together a list and is willing to come up and, and spend a few minutes covering what you've talked about. Um, I think that's a good way to start. If some of the tables I see have a few smaller people, you might want to combine with one of the other tables. Um, but otherwise, let's spend, we'll start with five minutes and we'll see how far people get and uh, then go from there. Does that sound good? Okay, great.